Okay, so this is a short presentation about Stage to Live Server Publishing. So we have two separate systems, a stage system and a live system, which have their own separate uh, configuration and live in their own separate databases and have their own separate areas in the file system. And we want to use one of these servers uh, to give it to editors where they change and add content. And then we want to review this content and approve and publish it on an individual basis. So page by page, or content record by content record, or individual file record by file record, instead of just doing a database synchronization or similar. So for this purpose, there's a publishing module. Now in the beginning, it will show me that everything is the same in the stage and the live server, which is kind of logical because I've just set up a new system. So if I go into a detail mode, I will also see all of the content elements and other records are exactly the same. Um, then I can just say, I will let editors start working. So in this case, in the demonstration, it's just going to be myself. But instead of recording all of this, I will just change to um, one of the backend users. Right away, for instance, we can see that this user does not have the um, permissions to publish himself. He can only make requests to say, I want to have this page deleted on the live server or I want to have it hidden on the live server, or I want to publish my new content to the live server, or I want to reserve my content so that it cannot be published because it's a work in progress. Okay, so I'll start editing now, and then we will see how reviewing and approving the content works. Okay, so let's say our editors are finished with working now. I'm going to log in and review the changes and publish them. Okay, so in the publishing module, I'll see right away that there are some changes. I can filter the output. So for example, to see only newly created pages or all of the pages with changes at all. And um, so for example, I see, okay, there are changes to the home page. By the way, um, I can see here there's a new carousel item. And um, if I want to get a more detailed uh, view, of course, I can always try to use the um, history, record history, but in the publishing module, I can also go in here and have a look what's going on with any individual page. So here I see there's a new file reference, a new template record, and a new content element, as well as changes to one content element. And if I want to know exactly what the changes are, um, Here I can see, of course, timestamp has changed. I've resorted this and a new sentence has been added. And here, for example, could be a case when I look at the, um, the new content element, um, I might find, here's an example just of adding images in many different ways. So I have a magic image, a plain image for an icon, reference, and I'm linking to a PDF from the text and from the headline. All of these files, of course, I will expect they need to be created on the live server because they're new uploads. But here could be an example where I say, I don't want to approve this whole page because maybe I'm, well, maybe we don't want to criticize the rich text editor. So um, let's say in this example, we are not going to publish this. Okay. So I select everything else. I approve. And I publish. So I get a log now, which is also saved to the database. And I see my file reference, my template record, and I see only one content element was published, although I selected all of them, because all the rest of them were unchanged. So of course, I'm only going to publish the changes. Okay, I've got new file records and metadata for them. And I've got new images where it tells me they were created on the live server. So it said new file and create on the live server. Okay. Then the um, page page is cleared for the page which I have changed so that it will be immediately visible on live. And I try to rebuild the real URL path if I change the title. In this case, no changes happened. Okay, so now I would expect to see on the live server all of the changes I made here on examples of rich text except the um, sentence about it being painful to configure. So here we are. 
different examples of text. So it takes a while because the cache has been cleared from that page. Here are all our files. And the sentence is missing, the new sentence. Here. Also, the sorting change is also affects this element, not published. OK, so I've got parts of my changes uh, moved over. OK, and if at a later date I want to um, publish that critical sentence anyway, I just go in here again and basically I need to reapprove. And I can publish that as well. And we go back to the live site. And so now we have the same thing on top. OK. Um, our new page is really a um, simple thing. So let's look at that page here, uh, what that is anyway. So this is just a small new page under feature, a little bit of text. Let's move that over. There we go. OK, so um, now this should show up on our website. Here it is. OK. So some more examples about file publishing. So here I have a little HTML file. I'm just going to publish that to the live server. And after that, I'm going to go into the file list. And I'm going to edit the content. So um, I'm just going to add some content. And um, yeah, that'll be enough. And so this is a changed file now on the uh, stage server. And in the file publishing module, um, I will now see it as a changed file. And I can see what has changed about it with a little diff. Can have it as inline as well. OK. Now, of course, there are not only text files here. There are also images. So if instead of a text file, an image is changed, this will, of course, also be labeled as changed. And I can just get a preview of what it looks like to understand what's going on. So I can also get an overview of all the changes across all the files. Um, and of course, if I'm looking at a very large uh, website with thousands of images, this will take quite a while to load, but it can be very helpful. So I can just say, OK, publish these. Maybe even new files, I will say, OK, this F here is OK. This stays only on stage. Publish them. There we go. They vanish from the um, view of changed files. OK, so um, differences between files is, uh, uh, are also easy to track. So I also have the uh, possibility to publish by categories. Um, so instead of having to search for all the elements that reference a file or having to search through my file admin, some files are in a category. I just say, I want to publish everything that's inside the category fo photographs, no matter where it is, no matter in which folder, just move them all to a live server. OK, so this is a little bit um, the topic of uh, file publishing. OK, so now let's go back to our page publishing module. And um, there was still one change missing. That's our start page. So let's move that over to the live server. OK, so we've got a new file reference. Uh, all of the other data, they haven't changed. Um, we've got a changed content element. We've changed carousel items and so forth. These haven't changed. The images um, are up to date. There's nothing that needs to be published. OK. And um, let's have a look at the live server after this publish now. So here is our new carousel element. So publishing some random uh, extension like that um, is also no problem. Basically, the tool will recognize any extension that uses TCA normally and that has, um, has a PID to pages. So you don't have to worry about making your extension publishing aware or anything. So usually we'll be publishing changes to things like pages and content from the stage server to the live system. And the live system just does content delivery. 
Now I'm going to look at an example where we might add new records on stage and live as well. So I've just created a front-end user group and a front-end user and published that, so stage and live look the same. Now we're just going to pretend that we have front-end registration on the live server. So we'll be creating new content, new records on the live server. Here we go. User from live. OK, so of course, this user get the database ID number two. Now, what happens when we generate a new user on the stage server, where we have ID one, we can have a problem if we now ge generate a different user, which we'll, I'll just call stage number two. And we could get a, a record conflict. So if we publish this, we could get a conflict. But if we link up the tables, um, we will get a synchronization of IDs, and we will find this guy gets the ID number three. So a slot has been reserved. And the other way around, if I generate a new user here, I'm going to call this the third stage user. OK, this now gets ID number four, going back to the live server. Our user so generated on live. This gets ID number five. So each time a slot is reserved for the corresponding data set. So I can basically go here and Publish these users. Okay. And on the live server, they will show up in the slots reserved for them, and there will be no conflict. Apart from the publishing functions, there are also some management functions. So, for example, I can delete the cache for individual pages or trees on the live server without going in there. Um, or I can compare the table structure. So um, basically here I can see, OK, um, on the stage server we have static file cache installed and it's missing on the live server. So we would have to um, synchronize those installations. And here the uh, static file cache table is missing. And um, also for some situations, um, I don't really need to push only individual parts of tables, like individual records, for example, your LV directs are something which I can't even find in the page tree. So I can just publish this or any other collection of pages which I set up in a configuration just straight as a full table. So it's just done by SQL and the entire table is moved to the left server. And in this way, most of the cases uh, can really be solved without having to log in on the left server at all.